Stevens. All from SPB. All right, good luck. Oh, my stream's approved. Oh, we're here. We're in there. Awesome. Okay, okay. Stream approved in the top 10. An hour and a half to go. Von Hennig accepted against the GM. What could be better? Life is good, my friends. Life is good. Ooh, and a new trick. And a new trick. And a new trick in the Von Hennig Gambit. Bishop f5, it's, it, it, it's a very interesting move, actually. Uh, trying to not give me this capture. Trying to, like, defend the pawn right there. To not, like, allow that development, which, which I have more tricks there. But trade, bishop f7, sacrifice the bishop, queen f3. Tricky lines here. Tricky, tricky lines. And not the first time I've confused the GM today. <laughs> All right, we play here at knight h3, I believe. My opponent playing very well. Uh, this is... Yes, knight d6 was one of the only correct moves. Okay. We have a few options. I could play just bishop d2. I, I might play here bishop f4. He's not going anywhere. Like, takes, then I would... Um, so, okay, well, now we can go somewhere. I could trade here and then take it. But you know what? I'm just going to take... So my opponent playing, I believe, what is the stockfish recommendation. And they are a pawn up. However, I have a little bit of compensation in here. I mean, their king position is not ideal. They're targeting this right now. So interesting position. Interesting position. Let's see what we can do. Let's go. I like a knight right there, right? So let's try to make that happen. I'm going to go knight here and check. I'm a Allowing that to fall at the moment. Take, take, like this check, they take it away. I can just back up a bit, bishop g3. Hit the queen, unleash this. No more issues on d4 with that pin. They, they would love to be able to like move the bishop, move the rock, and tuck their king back in, in which case I would definitely have nothing for the pawn. But I don't want to give them the opportunity to do all that. 86 check. No, what am I talking about? So, knight c5, b6, takes e6. Let's just go rook e1. And knight c5 is what I want to play. Targeting this. So they slide that out of the way. Again, trying to get that together. Gotta create some problems if you're white here. Gotta create some issues for your opponent. All right, bishop e5, good start. Although they're probably gonna be able to do that. Yeah, the rook's over here. I feel like they should be here, right? All right, rook g1. I have knight c5. I believe they should take it again. I'm not gonna do it though, just rook g1. All right, see you, banana. See you, see you next time. Make sure to join the Discord. So, threatening rook g7 now, knight is pinned. Bishop g5. So, seems a little desperate. Seems a little desperate. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to grab that and grab that. Th again, threatening rook g7, so they shift all the way over here. King e8, I believe, is next. Obviously, they can use the h-file now. What do we want here? D5 on the table. Let's try to break with D5. Yeah, I think that would be a really effective break. Obviously compromising my own king a little bit, but the breakthrough here and making that knight move, that knight is what holds their whole position together right now. And if I can... Like, because I was considering d5 and, like, rook sacrifices. Okay, hitting the rook. Oh, rook f5, perhaps? They take rook e1. I think that's just good. 
Like, I think I'm, I'm just feeling that. I'm just feeling that one right now. Queen e8, I got check. Queen d8, check. That's a draw. Queen e7. But I don't want to draw at all. Where's the win? You have seven, I have rook f1, so queen d8 is forced. This draws, like I said. Queen d8, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna take this pawn, but first I'll throw in a couple checks here just to mess with them. No interest in a draw. Let's try to checkmate them. It'd be Magnus Carlsen, and I wouldn't take a draw in this position. Uh, I need to dodge the queen trade. I mean, I don't know. It might be all right for black, objectively, but like practically, I've got some pressure cooking. Check. Queen d8, I was going to take it. King f7, I have rook f1 now. I'm just going to take some more stuff. Check. Queen d8, I take it. Like I said, king f7, I have rook f1. And I win the g8 rook. So even more stuff I take. Everything. Bishop f6, uh, it didn't do anything. Oh, it pins my queen. Shoot. Oh, we drew, but I have 0.2 seconds. I have 0.2 seconds. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I could have mated them there. Wow, what a game. What a game. What a game. All right. I had 0.2 seconds. I think I was fortunate to repeat there. What's up, Jager Walkie? Yeah, my stream is approved now. My stream is approved. It's good. It just happened just at the beginning of that game. All right, let's see. 20. 23, I'm gonna berserk. Oh, can we get a Leela Gambit here? Yeah, yeah, bishop b5. Yes, please, take this pawn. Thank you very much. Yes, 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 yes. This is one of my favorite gambits. Let's do it. Perfect chess always draws, but my opponents never play perfect chess. G3 is weird. What was the move? My opponent offers me a draw. That's funny. That's really cute. I'm getting so many jokesters today. The GM wanted me to repeat. This guy wants a draw. I don't play chess to draw. Although I did draw the last game, but I tried not to. Let's try and take G3. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, should we take g3? Don't tempt me like this. Don't tempt me like this. Take, take, king f1. Mm. Work. Doesn't really work. I don't have any good follow-up. Because it would be one thing if I can get a rook there. Right. Yeah, I acknowledge with bishop g4, I just cut myself there. 
G3, I should have done something better than what I did here. Kind of a little disappointed. Maybe five inches. Let's just castle. Oh, 95 I should have done, because now I was escaping. C3, I'll run away. Here, which I take and strike with d4? I think I should. Strike bef right before they run away. Let's go. Let's open that up. Let's open that up. We caught them just in time with 57 seconds. Uh, ooh, trade, take g3, but there's queen of two. You want to... Oh, this is a nasty move. Hit the knight, hit the rook. Yes. That is a nasty move. That is a good find. I might not have found that. That was a tough one. You gotta find things that are hanging. Uh, okay, trade. Oh, this just kills. This just kills. Look at that. Nowhere for the king to run. Nowhere. Hi, so unfortunately my stream cut out there, but I think it's a good thing that it did, because not only now will I take you through the final few moves of this game, but we'll be able to see where both sides went wrong, and also I will take you through a few of the ins and outs and the tricks of the somehow virtually unknown and so, so powerful Leela Gambit. So, only a few more moves left here. This is really quite winning for Black in the game I played Bishop Takes Knight. Uh, doesn't really matter whether you're playing Bishop Takes or Rook Takes. White has to take this anyway, because or else... Black's up a piece, and is about to be up a king down this uh, killer file. Queen takes, and I play here queen takes d4. Even nastier than just taking the queen right away is the fact that the queen's not going anywhere to the pin, and this rook's under attack, so really quite a disaster for white, because if they castle long, as they did in the game, now I'm taking uh, that queen for free. They can't even play king takes. Uh, and they went king over. Uh, sorry, in the game they played rook d to e1, and I play queen to a1, checkmate. So that's how the, that, that game ended. Let's see where we each could have done something a little bit better because I didn't even play the line. I didn't even play my own opening correctly. And it's a shame that I didn't because I'm going to show you one of my favorite, favorite traps after this in that line. Or really in any opening uh, video that I've done. So, so, so B3, E5, this is the Nimzo Larson opening. Quite common um, at high levels, I think, in, in in online chess, like, you see a lot of B3s. It's very trendy, even, like, among GMs, for, for, for whatever reason. Uh, so, B3, so we take the center. This is the one thing, maybe the one downside of B3, because any other move, right, they can just play kind of bishop B2. They can play maybe, like, F4, maybe to F3, and take, well, good control over that square. So the one thing that would really challenge that is playing E5. Of course, they attack it. And now not knight to f3 yet, because then e4 attacks that knight, but they're going to attack this pawn a different way, um, namely by coming after this knight with bishop to b5. And so this is where things kind of look tricky for black, because there's a lot of pressure on e5 now, they're threatening to just take it uh, due to this pin. And also if you play a move like bishop to d6, as the arrows recommend here, then after something like f4 or knight to f3, there's a lot of pressure on this pawn, and there's a lot of pressure on this pawn which is going to be even more tricky once you move that bishop out. So one of the really, really nice solutions that black has is the Leela Gambit to play knight to e7, and after bishop takes e5 to play a6, and now this capture is forced, or else this bishop will be lost. Say bishop to a4, just b5, right? So the capture is forced, or else uh, white loses. So takes, knight takes, and really solves black's position really well. They're down a pawn, but... Uh, they're up a lot of development, they have a really nice bishop pair, both of which are open, and the key point here is that after this bishop retreats, queen to g5, this pawn's a little tricky to, to protect, and in the Leela, uh, uh, the original Leela Gambit video, I will link it uh, here, you guys can see all the ins and outs of how to play this line, white has several options, uh, even, of, of course, leading up to this point, the main move being queen to f3, after which we play queen to g6, and there's really, really, really fun, fun tricks there, um, that that uh, I, 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 I can't do, do, them, do them again here, but they're so, so common to fall into and really, really fun stuff. But, so g3 is what was played in the game here, and I played this move h5, trying to play h4, which is not the best move. I didn't get even an inaccuracy for it, but I want to take you, so now let's go to the Leela Gambit study. Let's go to the Leela Gambit study. So here we have bishop b2, queen g5, g3. Okay. 
So the line here is with bishop to g4 first, before h5. So bishop to g4 now hit, hits the queen, and the line I give here is after f3, best move for white, to flex the bishop back to e6, we want to run this pawn down to h4. And the key difference, the key difference is because in the game after h5, my opponent should have used this square for the knight. But we play bishop to g4, bring the pawn there, right? If they go knight to f3 now, then this is uh, not going to end well at all for them with this pin. So they play your f3. We bring the bishop back, we want to run that pawn to h4, so they should castle long. However, we strike in the center quickly. We strike in the center quickly with this move d4 before the king can run away. White here should play knight e4, tempo on the queen. Queen runs, and now white thinks they've castled, and they've made it safe. They've gotten out of the center with their king, and they're up their pawn, and everything is groovy. But we here we hit them with an incredible, incredible tactical shot. It is the move. Bishop to a3. Really, just an absolute genius move, and white ear is already completely lost because this bishop is overwhelmed. And the, the, the critical line is that if they take the bishop, we play your d3, hitting the queen, threatening checkmate on a1. What a beautiful, beautiful line. If they play bishop back to b2, I believe we can take here, take here, and then recapture up a lot of material. So they play c takes d3, we go check. It looked like they created a square with c takes d3, but unfortunately for them, another just absolutely gorgeous move here, knight b4. Just bring the bishop further and further away. Bishop takes now being the only legal move. After queen takes, there's no more bishop to b2 to give them any safety. And after here, bishop takes b3. Just, just a really great picturesque position because these pieces completely box out, notably the white queen, from guarding against this checkmate threat, or, or this one as well. So here, this is literally mate next move. So really, really nice line there. If I played bishop to g4, so, I, so back to the game now, I didn't. I played this move h5. I, I mixed it up a little bit. I forgot to include bishop to g4 first. Now white should play this move knight to f3, since I never took away that square. They didn't. They played here h4. So h5, they met with h4. Now queen g6, and now it's kind of uh, similar to how it was before. And also with queen g6, common idea in this line, we're eyeing the c2 pawn. So in the game, my opponent plays d3. Just developing, bishop d6, looking at bishop takes g3. I mentioned all these things on the stream. Knight d2, bishop g4. So my piece is really just come to such nice squares. This is why I love playing gambits. This is why we gambit. Yes, I'm down a pawn, but look how just e much easier it is to play for me uh, rather than my opponent here. My opponent has to make this awkward knight d to f3 move because they're trying to create a square for the queen to run away. Uh, they never made it that far, as we know in the game, because after castles long, I'm not letting my opponent escape and run away. But I play correctly here, bishop to b4, and after they play bishop to c3, because we have this pin here, so they can't move their queen anymore, one more move, and now we strike immediately with d4. And white actually can technically hang on here. Queen d2, as they play in the game, was a double question mark, as we note, uh, because I was able to take and queen to f6 using this double attack. Uh, so what they should have played here was knight takes d4, grabbing yet another pawn, but this is just kind of an absolute disaster to play, because check... Their king has not made it out in time. We struck in the center, d4, blow, blew it all open just in time. King of one, f5. We can now try to play also f4. Uh, really use these, all these files very, very effectively. Much, much rather be black here. I know this is equal according to the engine, but this is not a fun sort of equality if you're playing with, with, the, with the white pieces at all. So in the game, uh, queen d2, I take here, and I'm for fortunate to have queen to f6, attacking the knight and attacking the rock. I actually take that back. I'm not really fortunate to have it. In positions like this, tactics tactics kind of present themselves for the side with the safe king, with the active pieces, and for the side trying to grab the pawns and hang on. It's tough. It's tough. I'm not going to lie. It's tough. These gambits are very, very effective. Uh, so, knight d4 was the only move that could be played to not lose one of these pieces immediately, but unfortunately, that grew even larger issues because of the e-file, and as we left off in the game, knight d2 being like the only legal move, and white loses their queen in the game. All right, Gambit Chads, watch the original Lila Gambit video. Also, if you like the Von Hennig Gambit, as shown in the first game of this video, I believe that's how I will edit it, uh, then I will link that below as well. All right, Gambit Chads, give it on. Peace out.